right, ladies. Let's see if we are live. I think we are live. I am super excited to be with you, with you guys this morning. Oh my goodness, I can talk today. Good gracious. All right, ladies, here we go. Okay. Uh, wow. I'm telling you, sometimes the words don't want to come. <sighs> Happy Wednesday morning, everyone. I am super excited to be here with you today. Let's get Instagram going. Oops, or take a picture. That's a picture. Let's discard that. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to get this going. Give me just a second, ladies. All right, here we go. All right, I think we are live. All right, happy Wednesday, everyone. My name is Leah Mason Virgin. I am your Christian business coach, life coach, author at BurstingWithBlessings.com and social selling expert. I love talking about sales, but today we are going to be talking about God's calling on your life and being confident in it. And, you know, today, I, if you're with me live, please let me know. Give me a smiley face or a hashtag live or whatever you want to drop in the chat here. If you are on replay, let me know. Hashtag replay. Um, I, interestingly enough, um, I posted a, a post about, about being a mother and about some of the regrets that I have. And, it, you know, for me, it, it got a lot of engagement. I was kind of surprised at the level of engagement that it got. And yet, at the same time, I'm not surprised, right? Um, you know, I spent uh, decades being very overly concerned about, you know, fear and anxiety, depression, worrying about what others thought. Um, you know, I had a lot of mindset issues. I had a lot of unresolved, um, you know, past trauma that I didn't know how to dig into scripture. I didn't know how to cultivate um, confidence and faithfulness from the word of God. I allowed um, the enemy to speak louder and more strongly to me than God. Right? Right? It is amazing to me how um, forceful the lies of the enemy can sound um, versus um, the gentle voice of the Lord. Right? Um, let's think on that, guys. Like, really, let's think on that this week. Um, that wasn't 100% what I was going to actually encourage you guys to think about today. But I really want to, hey Lisa, hey my friend, I really want to, let me say that again, the, the lies of the enemy and the voice of the enemy for me were so loud throughout the years. And it's interesting how God's voice is calm, quiet, sometimes he can be pretty insistent with me, right? But I don't know about you guys, but I think this might be very true for the mass majority of women, that the lies of the enemy sound very all-encompassing, drowning out every thought and voice, most especially drowning out the voice of God when we choose to dwell on what the enemy is saying, right? And the more that I would buy into the lies of the enemy, the, the more I would spiral, right? We know that God says, renew your mind in the word every day. And the post that I just mentioned that went semi, not viral, but, you know, got more engagement than most of my posts get. 
I was talking about my regret over um, the way that I spoke to my children, raised my children, interacted with the world around me, and I had been thinking about um, what Jesus said when he healed the guy, um, the man at the, uh, the pool of Siloam. He said, pick up your mat and walk. And I'm thinking about that. I was thinking about the fact that we can choose to pick up that which had been holding us back, that which represents um, brokenness, right? Like, think about that guy's mat. He laid on it for years. He even said to Jesus, I can't get to the pool because other people get there before me. I've been here for a really long time. And yet God said, pick up your mat and walk. And we know the officials, the the synagogue officials were pissed off. They were like, why are you carrying your mat? It's, you know, it's the Sabbath. And I kept, I kept thinking on it. And I really encourage you guys to think on it with the Holy Spirit. But I keep thinking on, like, you know, picking up that which used to represent brokenness. The testimony, right? And saying, see, see this thing that God has healed me from. See this thing? I'm healed. I'm called to pick up and go forth and co-create with God. To share and to encourage and to be with others. If you guys go to BibleGateway.com, today's Bible verse, I'm like, I don't know. I was reading quite a number of, of Bibles and, and today. I was reading in my Bible and Bible Gateway. So I think it's Bible Gateway. Um, is the one where, you know, Paul is writing that when the body, when someone is sick, when someone is hurting in the body of Christ, the whole body of Christ is hurting. Right? And I was just thinking, like, that's what we are called to do, is to show others, here is what God has healed me from. How can I come alongside of you and support you in your healing journey? And I'm not talking, like, here's the thing that annoys me to all get out in the online space, especially Instagram. It's like you see these random posts of like, God's going to bring your miracle this month. Claim it. Put an amen down below. Now, you guys know I believe that God can heal, transform miracles, the whole nine yards. But what I believe more than anything is that he wants us to become the miracle. Right? He wants us to cultivate faithfulness and healing in him and through his anointed Counselors, doctors, coaches. Like, he wants us coming together, right? That three strand twist, that tapestry of working together, coming together as the body of Christ, being concerned with others' healing journey. And if he performs just a miracle, how are others going to use their gifts to help that person? I mean, it can happen, but I really want us to think on this, you guys. I want us to question what we're seeing in the online space. I want us to question these one and done, claim it, blah, blah, blah things. Like, you know, I believe in decreeing a thing. I believe in praying scripture. I believe that we should speak affirmations 100%. I believe in this. But here's the other thing. We also have to consider God said his power is perfected in our weakness. So we keep crying out for a miracle 
and for full transformational healing. And I'm not saying don't do that. That's not what I'm saying. Hear me well, please. Thank you. But I want you to ask God, is this a part of me depending on you daily? Good morning, Aaron. I want us just to think on that and to ask. Like, I still battle anxiety and depression. Am I so much better than I was three years ago? Yes, 100%. It's almost, it's almost like full healing. Like today, I'm going to go to a women's business networking breakfast right after this. And four years ago, that would have been something that would have literally brought me to tears. And I, well, I probably wouldn't have even even considered it. <laughs> probably wouldn't have done it. But I have to daily have the spiritual battle to remain a thriving, joyful, present servant of the Lord. It's still a daily, it's not like a battle like, oh my God, it's crushing me. No, but it is a spiritual battle of me being prayerful, of me depending on God's strength and energy. Right? We have to depend on God's strength and energy. Most especially if he is calling you to extraordinary acts of service. And we shouldn't be shocked by this. Even Paul talked about this. Don't be shocked by the trials that come, right? I don't like it any more than you do, right? But what is God really wanting us to be cultivating faithfulness in him, to be picking up our mat and using it to further his kingdom agenda, to serve others, to be going out and connecting and being the hands and feet of Jesus. That is his kingdom agenda. And you are worthy of the high calling in Christ Jesus because you have repented. God, here's the thing, ladies. God doesn't remember our sins. He casts them as far as the east is to the west. Who remembers sins, guys? The enemy and us. Repentance should be a mindset shifting enlightening, eye-opening experience where we then say, no more Satan, I am called, I am worthy. I am right here, Psalm 87, I shall mention Rahab and Babylon among those who know me. Know me. God literally mentions Rahab the harlot. Are you a harlot? God forgives you. He loves you. Pick up your mat. Send no more. There is nothing in your past that should dictate that you cannot do extraordinary things right now. You could go and be on stages with Beth Moore, Priscilla Shire, whoever you want. If God is calling you to that, Best-selling author, minister, pastor, I don't care what he's calling you to. Better mother, working on it every day. There is nothing. There is no, no comparison that you should be making 
in the online space because God has called you. He has anointed you. He has sealed you. Sealed you. Think about that. God never does anything recklessly. You know, I know that that pop song, the Christian pop song, The Reckless Love. I call it extraordinary, amazing love. He is not reckless. God is so intentional, mindful, careful. He is brilliant, extraordinary. Right? Why do we diminish the forgiveness of God by holding on to our past? We are diminishing the love of God when we are sitting there saying, oh, she's better than me in the online space. I can't do that. Oh, Beth Moore is better than me. I can't do that. You're diminishing what God has done for you and called you to do. What does God want? An obedient heart. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your mind and with all your soul. This is the greatest commandment. Think about it, ladies. And I'm calling myself out on this. You know I'm not just stepping on y'all's toes. I'm stepping on mine too. When we say, but she's smarter than me. She's better than me. But my past is, well, this is, well, that is, well, I don't have enough energy to, to do what you're calling me to do. We are diminishing his power, his mercy, his love, his forgiveness. How dare we? Right? When the enemy is so loud in our minds. And God's voice, the still, strong, intentional voice. Yeah, it's that, it stands so counter to what the world says and what the enemy says and what we were raised with. I don't diminish how hard it is to triumph over what we were raised with, with the 45 years of ingrained mindset issues. I'm not diminishing it, ladies, but I'm calling you to strive harder to the active worship, to the active obedience, to the active rebuking of the enemy and his life. Because Jesus said, pick up your mat and walk and share and speak and do in accordance with my will and way. And ladies, there are so many times where I'm like, God, I'm just tired. I'm tired. I want this to be easier. But we can't let that be the stumbling block. We can't let that be the stumbling block. We have to rebuke that too, ladies. How often the enemy comes after me and says, you're tired, you're overwhelmed. This is too hard. I can't tell you how many times. So many, probably yesterday, <laughs> No, definitely Monday. <laughs> now think about that, ladies. Think about that. Think about that act of worship of doing in the midst of the imposter syndrome, in the midst of feeling like I just want to give up. I just want to lay down on my mat again. And Jesus said, I called you for greater things. I called you for greater things. I gifted you with extraordinary talents. And I am decreeing and declaring that we multiply those talents a hundredfold. I want us working to be the light, to standing against 
the evil and the sin that is trying to grow in this world. And ladies, we don't have to go out and post like flaming posts of like, this is sin and this blah, blah. No, we don't. I mean, if you're called to do that, which I truly, truly believe that is an anointing. I do. I do believe that is a calling. But simply posting how God is helping you day by day, what you're struggling with and how you're triumphing over it is a light. It is a beacon. Do not diminish its power. Ladies, some of you just joined me. But in the beginning, I was saying, I posted something on my Facebook page and I thought, eh, maybe a couple people would see it. It has over 50 engagements on it. And I was like, I don't know why I was so shocked. It was my heart just poured out with the truth. Just my heart poured out where I'm at, what I've triumphed over, what I'm striving toward, right? What are you striving toward? That's your content right there. I'm striving toward the high calling in Christ Jesus by XYZ. I'm doing XYZ. God has gifted me with helping XYZ. Don't be afraid to post that. And don't be so surprised when people are engaging with it and saying thank you. Because that's what happened this morning. A friend of mine said thank you. Thank you for posting this. And again, going, oh, wow. <laughs> Keep it simple. Keep it truthful. Keep shining and speaking and decree decreeing and declaring and being and doing and drowning out the voice of the enemy and dialing into that beautiful voice of God inside of you saying lean into me be strong in me of course you can't do it on your own of course you can't write a best-selling book on your own he doesn't want you to write it on your own he wants you to sit down every day and be like all right god this feels scary and hard let's do this Boom. Right? All right, let's pray, ladies. Woo, 22 minutes in. You love me. Good morning, Kimberly. I want us to think about, oh, this verse. All my springs of joy are in you. All my springs of joy are in the Lord. I may battle some depression, but I keep decreeing and declaring that I am anointed with the oil of joy and gladness. And all my joy is in the Lord and serving him. And no, I won't get it right. No, it won't be perfect. Yes, I'll be judged. Yes, I'll be embarrassed. Yes, I'll me mess up. But that doesn't matter. I'm striving towards the high calling in Christ Jesus. I am sealed and a servant. I decree and declare that. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we humbly come before you, Lord God, with praise and thanksgiving. Thank you, Jesus, that we are forgiven and free to pick up our mat and to walk and to show others. This is the mat that God healed, that God transformed. You have anointed these amazing women. Excuse me. You have anointed these amazing women and gifted them with extraordinary talents. Lord, I pray that they would remember every morning to decree and declare that your strength is what propels them forward. I pray that you would help them dig deep into scripture and to find 
the scripture to stand on, to speak, to declare, to speak to the dry bones and to watch the dry bones live by your extraordinary power, Lord. You are extraordinary. You are not reckless. You're amazing. You're intentional. You craft all things in a way that we are constantly in all. Lord, I pray that you would protect them, that you would rebuke the devourer far from them, and that you would keep them as the apple of your eye. That you would cause the enemy to flee in seven different directions away from us. And that you would help us to know the difference between the enemy's lies and your truth. That you would grant us God-blessed eyes to see solutions where we think there is none. To have God-blessed eyes, to have clarity over um, the repentance process, the mindset shifts. The empowerment to go forth and to do and to co-create and to co-build and to become a part of your kingdom agenda. To be the shining silver thread in the tapestry of this world. Refined seven times. Shining. A city on a hill. Help these ladies uncover their light, your light, which dwells in them. They are marked as Christ's own. They are sealed by the Holy Spirit. Help us, Lord. Help us just to be okay with weakness. I'm not okay with it. But your power is perfected in my weakness. I'm not comfortable with it. But I am becoming comfortable being uncomfortable every day. I want to be uncomfortable and obedient. That's not 100% true, Lord. <laughs> you know it. I'm striving towards the high calling. I'm running the race that is only marked out for me. I pray that these ladies would run with perseverance, stamina, energy, that you would renew their strength and energy by your hand. Help them to soar aloft on equal swings. Open doors that no spirit of person can shut extraordinary opportunities where they look at you and go only by your hand, Lord, only by your hand. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. I am unworthy of the high calling. I am unworthy of your calling. But I so grateful, Lord. We are so grateful because we become worthy after repentance and we will actively worship you every day we will go forth we will co-create we will be actively obedient actively worship you and we will rebuke comparison we will rebuke jealousy we will rebuke the desire to shy away from criticism imposter syndrome, whatever is holding these extraordinary women back, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ, and I pray that they would rebuke it and go forth with boldness, confidence, courage. You are Jehovah Nisi, our banner that goes before us. You are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. Ooh. Sorry, ladies. Today, man, the Holy Spirit high fives Jesus. I was, half of that was not even what I was planning on talking about. <laughs> you know, that's how that works, right? I love you guys. I'm so 
glad that you joined me today. I'm so honored and privileged to share a little bit of where my heart with you guys today. I love you all so much and I know that you are anointed, you are gifted. You are the shining light. You are the body of Christ and we cannot do this alone. We cannot do this alone. We cannot turn the tide. This evil, broken, sinful world, Christians are the ones that hold back the second coming. We are. We're the ones that hold back. Because we are the ones that are the shining light. We are the ones that create revival, transformation. We are the ones that bring others to Abba Father. So go forth in your weakness, but in God's power.